Hi guys, welcome back to another video on Apache Cassandra. In this video, we're going to look at copying data from CSVs into Apache Cassandra and also exporting data from Apache Cassandra tables into CSVs. We can see here that we have a CSV file with a number of columns and a number of rows. What we want to do is we want to import into a table in Apache Cassandra. In order to do this, the table must already exist in Cassandra. So we must have a table where at least some of the columns in the table line up to some of the columns in this CSV. In particular, we must ensure that every primary key column in the database is satisfied by a column in our CSV. For instance, if the primary key in this case was made up of car make, car model and start year in the table, we must ensure that our CSV has at least those three columns. Any column that's missing in the CSV but exists in the table that is not part of the primary key will be set to null when we import the data. So in order to do this, we'll jump back into CQLSH or the Cassandra shell and create the table we need to import the data. So we're back in the shell here and all we need to do is create the table that we want to import the data for that will satisfy what we have in our CSV. And this importation process is particularly useful when we're trying Cassandra and we want to import a somewhat large data set in order to mess around with. I think it's limited to about 2 million rows, so for most testing purposes that should be sufficient. But if we're importing more rows than that, we should use the batch import that Cassandra has built in. So we'll create the table using the create table command. We'll give it a name. In this case, we'll just call it test CSV import. And then we have to specify, as usual, all the names and types of the rows that make up the table, as well as what will be the primary key. So we'll have car make, which is type text, car model, which is a type text. And notice how we're using the same names as we have in the CSV, the start year, which is int. We have the ID, which is int in this case. Again, no, we're not using a UUID here. Then we have first name. Again, type text, last name, text, and finally department, text. We now need to specify what our primary key will be. In this case, we're going to use the car make as the partition key and we're going to have car model start year and id as clustering columns this should make a unique primary key so now that the table has been created we can begin importing the data from the csv into our newly created table we also need to know the location of our csv in order to import it into cassandra so we can simply open up a new shell and navigate to where we have the data stored. In this case, we have it stored on our desktop. So we can navigate to desktop. We can list the files on our desktop using ls. And we can see that the file we want to import is called Cassandra CSV. And in order to find the exact path where we are, we can simply type pwd. And we can see that the CSV file we want to import is located at slash home slash jumpstart cs slash desktop and then slash Cassandra CSV. So with that information and with the table already created in Cassandra, we can use the copy command to copy the data into our Cassandra database table. Back in the Cassandra shell, we want to use copy and then we want to give the name of the database table that we just created. So test CSV import. Then we want to give the names of all the columns we want to import. So in this case, we want to import data to all the columns. So we'll just specify them all. Car make, car model, start year, ID, first name, last name, and department. We then want to use from, and we want to specify the file name that we saw earlier. So as before, our, we know our file is located in home slash jump start CS slash desktop. And then the file name is cassandra.csv. And we want to enclose that in single quotes. We then want to use width and we want to use delimiter 
because we want to specify how the CSV is partitioned. In this case, it's a CSV file, comma separated values file. So we know the delimiter is a comma. So we simply type delimiter equals, and then in single quotes, the comma. And we also want to specify if the file has headers, which it does, headers equals true. Sorry, that should be specified as header, not headers. And when we do that, we can see that we've processed 13 rows, which was the number of rows in our CSV. If we use the select star from command to view all the data in our table, in this case, test CSV import, we'll see that all rows have been successfully imported. And as expected, we can see all the rows here. If department, first name or last name was not specified in our copy command, or it did not exist in the CSV file, all rows in the column would simply have a null value for that column. So say for instance, we left out first name in the CSV, all of these values here will be null for this table. We can also copy data out of a table to a new CSV file. So to achieve this, we again use the copy command and give the table name. So what we'll do in this case is we'll just recreate the CSV in a different location that we used to create this table originally. So the table is called test CSV import. And then what we want to do is instead of using copy from, we want to use copy to, and then we want to give a file. So in this case, we'll just use the same location as before, home, jumpstart, cs slash desktop. And we'll give a new file, we'll just call it test copy.csv and this file should be created for us by our copy command and we also want to specify the delimiter again as this will tell the csv file or tell cassandra what delimiter to use when creating the csv file and again we'll just use a comma so when we run that we can see that it has again processed 13 rows if we jump back into our bash shell, we're again on our desktop and we can list the files, we should see that the test copy.csv file has been created. So we can open that to see what's inside it. If we open test copy CSV, we'll see that we have the same values as before. We can also specify what columns we want to export in our command. So if we run the same command, we change the file name to test copy two, so it creates a new file for us. And after we write copy and the name of the table, we can specify a number of different columns we want to export. So we might specify car make, department, and first name. And we can specify any column names here because we're simply exporting the data. We don't have to be concerned with primary keys. And that process should run again if we navigate back to our shell, we'll see that three files should be now stored here. And as expected, we have test copy two. We'll open that file and we'll see that only the rows you've specified has been exported. And as we expected, we only have the car make, the department, and the first name of the data in our table.